I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the epic tradition and the heroic archetype, uh, or why all heroes seem similar and also familiar. You've dealt with epics before, you've dealt with epic heroes before, and so now we're taking this a step further, or maybe a step farther, and we're going to work with this idea of an archetype. But first, let's do a little review. Let's talk about what an epic is. Uh, you can find this on page 17 in your textbook, but these are your basic characteristics of an epic. It's a long narrative poem about a quest. It's told in very formal, very elevated language. There's a larger than life hero, and that hero embodies the values of a particular culture. There's this incredible plot. There's large scale events and battles. And there's a mix here of myth, legend, history, that often includes gods and goddesses as characters. And through retelling, an epic preserves and passes a culture's values from one generation to the next. An epic hero is the main character of an epic. Uh, and an epic hero will have most, if not all, of these seven characteristics. He will be from, a, and it will be a male. He will be of noble birth. He will be capable of great deeds of strength and courage. He'll be a great warrior. He'll travel over a vast setting. There's this idea of national heroism. where He's some kind of a national hero. Humility, although that one can be debatable. And then he will face supernatural foes, and he will receive supernatural help. So now we're going to talk about this heroic archetype. Why all epic heroes seem familiar and why all epic heroes have such similarities. Archetype is defined as the original pattern or model of which all things of that same type are representations or copies. An archetype is a pattern or a model. The epic tradition and the heroic archetype remain consistent across time and across cultures. According to Jung, a hero's main feat is to overcome the monster of darkness. It is the long hoped for and expected triumph of consciousness over the unconscious. Basically, regardless of time or place, all epics express this same need for good to triumph over evil, regardless of the form that that evil takes. Campbell believes there is a certain typical hero sequence of actions which can be detected in stories from all over the world and from many periods of history. Essentially, it might even be said that there is but one archetypal mythic hero whose life has been replicated in many lands by many, many people. An archetype is a pattern, and all epic heroes follow the same pattern. So that's why you should be able to draw similarities between Beowulf and Odysseus, or between Beowulf and Achilles, or uh, between Beowulf the Epic and uh, Lord of the Rings, or between Beowulf the Epic and Star Wars. So there should be similarities because they follow this same pattern. So then the question is, is that is is the heroic archetype in the epic tradition still relevant? In, in short, the answer is yes. They form this bridge from the past to the future. And your textbook has this quote in it, and I think that that really answers this question. I teach the kings the history of their ancestors, for the world is old, but the future springs from the past. Remember, epics demonstrate a culture's values. Those values are passed down through the retelling of those epics. Those epics also contain universal themes, universal struggles. And since they're universal, regardless of time or place, everybody has some kind of a connection to them. And therefore, the epic tradition still endures. If you listened all the way through this, send me a quick message with the word paperclip and I'll give you a bonus point.